Good day and greetings from the Great White North. My name is Prickly Pooh and welcome to day 82 of A Year of Change. Today we are going to talk about two different subjects. Oh, the same subject, sort of. They're linked. Um, but two different stories related to it. Um, the, I've sort of touched... I always generally start these out the same way. I've sort of touched on this before. Um, we've talked about this a couple of times before that people seem to look for... Like, the one thing that's going to help them get healthier or lose weight or some miracle thing that, you know, or something really odd and out there that they think, this is it, this is what's going to, you know, cure all my ills and, you know, take care of me for the rest of my life. And it's just not out there. But, having said that, there are a couple of different studies that have come out um, that are probably going to lend credence to this. Um, well, one is sort of taking away from it, one is sort of adding to it. And keep in mind, I haven't really looked in-depth into these things, but it's just interesting, so I thought I would bring it to you. The first one is a study that was published actually yesterday. Um, well, early today in the Netherlands, I guess, which is where it comes from. Um, there's There was a study that was done by Maastricht University in the Netherlands. And it started way back in 1986, and... They took a group of 120,000 men and women, um, anywhere from age 55 to 69, and followed them for 10 years or 20 years, whatever it is. wouldn't be 20, I guess, because that hadn't happened yet. Uh, or no, that has, because 1986, not 1996. 1986, they did a follow-up in 96, yes, and then they've done everything else. So, anyway, they followed them for 10 or 20 years, however long it was. And I think it was just the 10, so from 1986 to 1996, and then they've been just sort of gathering all the data and studying all the other stuff. And they found something interesting, um, that there was a huge discrepancy between one group and another group. Specifically, there was one group of people that they looked at that consumed like peanuts and tree nuts on a regular basis. Now, we'll sort of get into the nitty-gritty of it later, but the basic premise is that the people that ate nuts like on a daily basis had a mortality rate directly affected by that, but not in the way that you might think. Because generally when you think, oh, well, you're eating nuts, there's lots of fat and there's bad things in it and everything else, it's, it sort of went the other way. And when I say a big discrepancy, I mean a big discrepancy. Normally, when in studies like this, they go, oh, there's a 5 or 10% difference between this, that, and the other thing. These were very, very big. What they found is that overall, people who ate nuts um, on a regular basis, um, as opposed to people who didn't, there was a 23% difference in their mortality rates. I'm not sure if they went by year or by month or by day or whatever it was, but these people lived much, much longer, lived 23% longer than the people who didn't. So on top of that, they noticed there were big, big differences in diseases as well. The people who ate nuts had, uh, compared to the people who didn't, um, it lowered their chances of diabetes by 30%. There was a, th I have the numbers on my screen, yeah, 39%. Um, reduction for any respiratory disease, so like asthma, emphysema, stuff like that, and a 45% less chance, or not 45%, but there's a 45% difference. There is, what is it? Um, lower risk. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. 45% lower risk um, of any neurological disorders or neurolo neurodegenerative diseases, I'll say. So things like dementia and Alzheimer's and, you know, things like that. ALS. So, where, ALS isn't neurodegenerative. Uh, anyway, I'm thinking of the wrong thing. So, basically, the people that ate nuts on a regular basis um, had less dementia, uh, were less affected by Alzheimer's disease, by 45% lower risk. Diabetes, they looked at... Um, you know, just mental disorders, lung disorders, um, heart problems, anything cardiovascular. I mean, they just, across the board, they noticed there was a big, big difference. So, of course, some people, they've, they've been looking at it and saying, okay, well, the people who ate that generally are probably going to eat 
you know, healthier foods. They may get more exercise and things like that. And apparently they've taken that into account as well. Um, that people who eat that are, you know, generally will eat more fruits and vegetables. Um, that they're generally leaner. They've taken all these things into account. These are the numbers that, as far as they can tell, are related only to the intake of peanuts and tree nuts. Um, now, this is something that, of course, I thought, oh, this this is probably going to work. Uh, it doesn't, peanut butter does not count. There was no link whatsoever with peanut butter. Um, they said there's just, there's too much added salt and sugar and fat and everything else in there that it has no effect whatsoever, like no benefit anyway. Um, so for those of you out there that thought that you could just double up on your peanut butter sandwiches, like I kind of hoped, no, it's not going to work that way. Um, now this isn't eating like massive quantities. This is just like a handful a day. Um, I'm not sure how they were able to track that for 10 years, but apparently they've done the research. They've done everything in there. This was published in the International Journal of Epidemiology yesterday, or today, depending on what time zone you're in. Um, but, and it's, like, you can go online, you can read up on sort of the little snippets of it, uh, the synopsis and the summary and things like that. The actual journal, you have to subscribe to, um, the Oxford Journal Press, or Oxford Press, can't remember what, exactly what it's called, you have to subscribe to it, um, in order to be able to go in and read the full, uh, study. But you can sort of go in, you can read a quick summary of it, you can look at the different links that are in there, and I'm assuming they're going to do more research on this, because this is the sort of thing that people are probably going to jump on and go, oh, I can just eat nuts and I'll be absolutely fine for the rest of my life, and I won't get, you know, Alzheimer's disease, and I won't have to worry about diabetes, and I won't get emphysema. Which, I have a really hard time understanding how that works, but... The study is done by people far smarter than I am, so I'd have to look at that first and go, ah, oh, maybe I still don't understand it. But the reason why I bring this up is because there's always something that people are looking for. Like, for a while it was, um, what are they called? Acai berries, or however you pronounce it, that everyone said, oh, no, this is the this is going to be the miracle food. This is going to be it. Or goji berries. There's, there's always something, some little food that someone looks at and goes, oh, this, this is what you're going to do. This, and people jump on the bandwagon and they just ride the shit out of it. And then they go, I don't understand. It's not working. I still you know, walk in front of a bus and it didn't stop. So it's these aren't things that are going to give you superpowers. These aren't things that are going to make you la live 20 years longer. They're just saying there is a link there. Um, and from what the study says, it's, it's a substantial one, which is really weird. And they said that there are a lot of benefits for things like that. Like there's, uh, you always hear antioxidants and things like that, but the vitamins and everything else and fatty acids that are in nuts that are good for us, which is fine. I mean, it sort of makes sense. It's not exactly a fruit. It's not exactly a vegetable. So, but it is in that same group of, I don't know what you would call natural things that way. But... So, I mean, there are going to be some health benefits, but for me anyway, especially, I, I've always looked at it and went, eh, I don't know, there's a lot of fat in it, and I thought that was going to be bad, but now they're saying that some of it is good. So, again, it's one of those things, you know, in moderation, you should be fine. Don't go out and just start buying mixed nuts by the pound, thinking, I'm going to live forever, this is going to be great. It's not. And inevitably, I guarantee you, someone is going to jump on this. There's going to be some quack out there that's going to say, oh, all you need to do is do this, and it will cure, you know, this, 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 and this. Um, sort of the opposite of that wheat fear that everyone's going on about. Which I will not get into. Don't worry. I've done this far too many times. I've been complaining about the wheat thing. This is sort of a positive thing. But just a little caveat there that it's, it's not a cure-all. It's just a very interesting study that came out. So if you get a chance, go up, take a look. I'm going to put a, a couple of links down in the uh, description as well for the video. So you can go in, take a quick look at it, and you can do your own little search that way. And plus, you'll learn how to spell Maastricht University. So I had to look it up. Anyway, um, that is one of the weird stories that's out there. Um, this is sort of going in the opposite direction now, because this was one of those things that sort of went hand in hand with the, oh, well, it's, it's a miracle thing. If you eat it, then it it boosts your energy and gives you vital nutrients and gives you iron and everything else. Um, and it was always one of those things that I just thought uh, I never really looked into because it was just, for me anyway, kind of gross. Um, and oh, I will warn you ahead of time, for those of you with a weak stomach, don't watch any further. 
Um, I don't do anything gross, so don't worry. But just we're going to be talking about it. So this is um, a study that was done in the U.S. actually, and it was sort of focused on what is called placentophagy. And in case you're wondering, going that sounds an awful lot. Hey, yeah, it is. It's people eating their placenta after childbirth. And this study in the U.S., there have been people that have been out there that are that have said, "Oh no, it's it's very good for you. It has nutrients, and you know, there's you know, rich iron in it and everything else because there's lots of blood flow in it." Um, and there are some people that like just would cook it. There are some people that will eat it raw. There are some people that will have it powdered and put into a pill form, and then gradually eat it that way. And this study has looked at it and just went, "No, there are no." benefits to it whatsoever there i mean anything any positive effect that people have said that they've had they say is and again this is one of those things i know already people are going how would you know you don't have a placenta i did when i was very very young i had one attached to me but i had it removed um but this is something like this isn't something that has just been thrown out there and saying nope nope there's no benefit to it this is an actual study and the spokeswoman for the royal college of um, obstetrics and gynecologists has said, no, you shouldn't be eating it. You can do whatever you want with it, but I wouldn't recommend eating it. There are no health benefits whatsoever. Um, and it, now I will say, just for those naysayers out there, they have not done any research on what any potential risks might be there. Um, I mean, there are doctors that are saying, you know, this is designed to protect the baby against, you know, toxins and bacteria and viruses and things like that so there you know there could be something still remaining in there but they haven't done any studies there are zero studies out there showing any of the risks to eating a placenta um this is mainly just they were focusing on what benefits there would be and there are zero there are no benefits whatsoever um people are saying you know it's very higher high in iron no it's not there are people that are saying oh it's very nutritious no it's not there are no benefits to eating it. They say, you know, you can certainly do whatever you want with it. But I would, doctors are saying, I wouldn't recommend that you eat it. Um, and if you still decide to do it, there are no benefits to it whatsoever. So, given the two, um, you can pref tell, say which one that you prefer. Um, it's not very helpful for those of you with a nut allergy at this point. I know I should probably offer you an alternative, but the alternative is probably not that appealing. Um, and for those of you out there that are thinking, should that be something I should do? Um, you know, not, not the nut thing, but the placenta thing. Um, really look into it because it's, there's, from what they can say, there is no benefit whatsoever. And I know those are really unrelated and really odd. <laughs> but again, it, it sort of fell into that category of, you know, things that people will eat thinking that it's, you know, it's, it's a miracle food of some sort. And whether it's your placenta or a handful of nuts or wheat or acai berries, or I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. I really should have looked that up. It's A-C-A-I. I would assume it's acai berries. But it could be acai berries or something. I don't know. I don't know where they're from. I don't know how they're pronounced. It's not my fault. I never eat them. But there's always something that people are sort of latching onto and saying, oh, if you, you know, I mean, I've said this before as well. You see these things on the, on the internet all the time. And it says, find the one food that you need to lose weight or the one food that will boost your, you know, heart rate or cut down 90% on heart disease or eat this for, you know, brain power. Fish is brain food. There's a really an oldie and a goodie, which has no fucking basis in reality either. Um, there's no one food that you're going to be able to eat to say there, this food is going to target your brain cells. That's ridiculous. It's very, very stupid. It's just archaic thinking. And it's the same sort of thing with, you know, and this is why I say when we look at the study with the nuts, I haven't looked at it enough to say, oh, well, then I'm going to start eating them every single day because I don't know. Um, I might look at it and go, eh, I mean, I would trust them because it's a study. But again, this is only one. And granted, it's a huge population sample of 120,000 people over a very long period of time. And they say they've taken out all the other mitigating factors like, um, you know, body weight and uh, eating habits, exercise, all that stuff. And they're saying that this is strictly focusing on just nut and peanut intake. Or sorry, peanut and tree nut specifically, that intake. Um, 
but it's not going to be something that I'm just going to sort of run to. And I've said this before as well. I know I keep saying that throughout this entire bit. I'm going to just, for the next five minutes or whatever, all the stuff I've said before, that when you do find something like this, take it with a grain of salt and, ha, huh, salted peanuts. Huh. Uh, maybe self laugh. Anyway, take it with a grain of salt. Do your own research. Make your own decision as to whether or not you want to do this. Same thing with the placenta thing. Make your own decision. You have recommendations. You have studies. And again, this is just one study. But this is one of those things that they have, people smarter than us have gone through and done extensive research in this. Make your own decision on this, but do your research. Don't just grab onto it and say, there, there's, this is what I have to do from now on. Um, and that's why I sort of linked these two together into one, because it, for me anyway, it looked as if it was sort of the same thing, just opposite ends of the spectrum. Where one, you have one thing where people are going, oh, this is the greatest thing in the world. And then this, which at some point, I can guarantee you someone somewhere is going to say, this is what you need to do so that you can, you know, live an extra 20 years. And when we do see that, I will make a point of bringing it up here. Just to go, ha ha, I told you. Mwahaha. But just like anything that we do, um, including any advice that you get here, which isn't, eh, I suppose it is sort of advice. This is stuff that works for me. Um, and so I'm sharing it along with you. Anything that we see from the other YouTubers that we go and look at, this is stuff that's working for them. So you need to try different things um, and you know, take their advice, take my advice, take someone else's advice, and look at all the information. Throw out what you don't need. Throw out what you think is just bullshit. Throw out everything that isn't going to work properly for you. And look at it objectively and with a clear head and just say, okay, this is what I think this is what my opinion would be. And then go with that. Of course, don't just blindly say, nope, that's bullshit, and just follow along with your opinion, because your opinion could be wrong. Um, you know, it's one of those things that you need to do some homework first and make an educated decision. That's a better term than just your opinion. Make an educated and informed decision so that you can take all the information in and then say, here's what I've decided to do, whether it's right or wrong, this is what I think is going to work for me. So for me personally, um, I do eat nuts every now and then. I'm not going to increase my in intake thinking that I'm going to add another 20 years to my life because it's just one of those things that, especially right now, um, they have a lot of calories in them and I'm trying to maintain a certain calorie number. So I'm going to leave that as is. As far as the placenta, um, I can't eat my own and I'm not really going to go ask someone else for it. So for that, I'm going to leave that where it is as well. Um, I think that would probably be one of the most awkward conversations that you could have. Um, so, and I don't know anybody that has just one laying around anyway. So, I'm very adventurous. I've, we, I talked about trying century eggs, I think, a while back. And trying new foods and things like that. But that's one thing that I'm thinking, no, I'll just, I won't bother trying that one. That will be one that I will set aside. And just like eating live octopus... That's something that I'm probably not going to try either. Um, just to sort of make sure that I am I know where I stand. Like that's that's where my limit is. Is eating a placenta, I think, is probably going to be out there. I could, I could die not ever trying it, and I don't think I would feel like I've missed out on anything. Which may change in 20 years, which I can't imagine, but... Bleh. Anyway... Um, so I've thoroughly, you know, offended some people. I've thoroughly grossed out some others. And then others that have a peanut allergy are probably sitting here going, I'm going to die 10 years sooner than everybody else. But I'm sure there's going to be something down the road that's going to help you out as well. But that's it for this one. Um, yesterday I ran a little bit long. So I'm going to try to shorten this one up a little bit. Um, hopefully, anyway. Um, oh, nope. <laughs> Still over 15 minutes. It's okay. It's It won't go for half an hour. So we'll end this one here, and I'll sort of leave you with that. I'll put some links down below so that you can go in and take a look at the study on peanuts and the study on placenta. You can sort of follow those along and do your own research and take a look at those if you want. I know it's unrelated, but to me, they sort of went hand in hand with this. Anyway, that's it for this video, so thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please poke the like button for me, and in the meantime, keep yourself warm and fuzzy, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.